A lot of people think that because their houses are bolted, they're in good shape. It sounds very impressive. Hey, my house is bolted. But there are a lot of connections that can fail uh, besides the bolt connection. And so even though your house is bolted, uh, there, there are some problems, potential problems, and we're going to look at those right now. There's no telling for sure if your house is bolted unless it's built after 1958 and 1927 in San Jose. Uh, that was part of their building code. And then other cities adopted the code, uh, you know, the bolting requirement later on. For example, uh, Fremont was December of 1956, and other cities just were piecemeal. No talent without actually, um, without, you know, checking your house. And the one way you find out if it is bolted is when you go into the crawl space, if it's on the outside, you'll f find a bolt uh, six inches within, actually within 12 inches of the end of the mud sill, which will be right to the one, one to the right of the opening and one to the left opening. And then if you go along, just feel your hand up where the mud sill is, you should find one every six feet. And if your garage is open where you can see it, you should also find one every six feet. So that's how you tell if your house is bolted. And if it's bolted every six feet, you do actually meet uh, the building code standard at the time, which didn't change until July of 1999. This house looks like it was built probably between 1945 and 1955. If it were in San Jose, uh, built after 1927, we would know it was bolted. If it was uh, in Fremont, uh, probably not because it didn't require bolting until December of 1956. And you know, it, it depends on the city. Uh, I'd like to show you where all the bolting and the attachments to the foundation take place. So this right here is your foundation. This right here is the floor you walk around on. And this is the floor framing. And that's, you know, the, that's the wood that is underneath the floor you walk around on. So you walk around up here and then there's this wood here and that's called right here at the top that's called the floor joist and we're going to look at those in a second. And then this right here is a mud sill. And a mud sill is very important because that's where the bolts go. So there are two connections right here. One is the mud sill connection, mud sill the foundation, and then right up here this is the floor joist connection. We've got to make sure both of those are strong. So the first connection we make is the bolts. The bolts go to the bottom of the floor. They go like that into the foundation. And then, and that goes through a piece of wood that's right here. And then we want to make sure that this piece of wood called the floor joist does not go sliding off. So that's all we need to do. And you know, if the house is new or the house is old and it's bolted, um, you still have a problem. I'm going to explain what it is. And it actually comes down to a deficiency in the building code. The building code has a nailed connection, which is clearly inadequate and which has, um, you know, resulted in a lot of damage to a lot of houses in previous earthquakes. And that's primarily what we're going to be addressing. There's also a way, uh, if you count the existing bolts of having some strength, and they do, even if they're oversized holes and even if they don't have the proper washers, uh, according to the new code, uh, you can go ahead and make your house twice as strong without spending a whole lot of money. So that's what this uh, video is going to be going over. So this is what it looks like under your house. Here is the floor you walk around on. This is the joist we were just talking about, and this is the mud sill where the bolts go. Here's a bolt, and here's a bolt, and right here is the foundation. Now what we're worried about is when the earthquake comes this way, as shown by the red arrow, that this does not go sliding on top of that, and that this mud sill does not go sliding on top of the foundation. So those are the connections we're talking about. So from here on, we're going to be talking about joists, and we're going to be talking about mud cells, and we're going to be talking about the foundation. Now, the building code deficiency that I was talking to you about uh, is, you know, pretty interesting. What it says is that wherever there's a joist, so here's a joist, here's a joist, here's a joist, here's a joist. What it says is wherever a joist touches a mud cell, it has to have three nails. So we're going to have three nails here, three nails here, three nails here three nails up in here, but also along here, even if it's 24 feet long, it can still just have three nails. And three nails is clearly inadequate for a 24 foot long uh, piece of wood. And there are photographs that you'll see later on of damage that has occurred because of this. If your house is bolted and it was before July of 1999, 
It'll have a half inch bolt every six feet with a round washer. The newer newer houses have to have a five eighths bolt uh, every four feet with a square washer. But anyway, when you have them uh, put every six feet from an earthquake point of view, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, and I'll show you why. Earthquake forces coming in this direction are going to be resisted here by these four bolts, and they're going to be resisted here by these four bolts for a total of eight bolts. Now, earthquake forces coming in this direction are going to be resisted by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight on that side, eight on this side, by 16 bolts. Now, earthquake forces attack a house equally in all directions. So each side of the house is going to need to resist the same amount of force. So as it is right now, the, uh, you know, in one direction, it's only half as strong as in the other direction. So this is a real problem, and we're going to see how you can really uh, improve the performance of your house uh, very simply and very cheaply by just increasing the bolting on this side where you have the, you know, fewer bolts than this side. So this side has fewer bolts, this side has fewer bolts, and what we want to do is we want to balance them all so that the same number of bolts are here, that are here, that are here, and that are here. So anyway, uh, I just want to give you the rationale before what, be, uh, behind what you're going to see in just a second. These red lines right here are called foundation anchors, and they do the exact same thing as a bolt. They're just made so you can't, um, you know, when you don't have room underneath the house to put in a drill motor, you can do them from the side, and that's all they are. So what we've done here is, because we've only had four bolts on this side and four bolts on this side, and eight bolts on this side and eight bolts on this side, we put four of these on this side to make a total of eight. We put four of them on this side to make a total of eight. And now we're fully balanced in all directions. And for the earthquake forces attacking from the left here, we're going to have a total of 16 bolts resisting. And earthquake forces coming you know, down from the other direction will also have 16. And ultimately, we've actually doubled the strength of our house simply by uh, increasing the bolting on two sides to match the sides of the stronger sides uh, on the longer walls. And so do you remember when I talked to you about a building code deficiency? Uh, we're going to see that right now. What happened here, right, this is a floor joist. So this is the same as that piece of wood right here. And an earthquake force, you know, came and it pushed it off the mud sill. Here's your mud sill. There's a bolt here and then there's a bolt here. Here's your mud sill right here, and you can see the earthquake force is sliding off. So what we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen is we put in something called a shear transfer tie. So this is a piece of metal uh, that you know connects this piece of wood to the mud sill to keep it from sliding. Now what we had right here, this was you, know, you can't see the entire you know joist. It's 24 feet long, and if it only had three nails in it, even though that was according to code, you you got this kind of damage. So this is one of the places in a retrofit. When we're doing a retrofit and we are making this connection, this is where we really feel like we've made a big improvement on the house. Increasing the bolting is a great idea, but if you really want to do something that is very cost effective, um, go ahead and put the shear transfer ties in to connect the floor joist, uh, the end joist, to the mud sill. I'd like to point out, in this case, the mud sill was actually bolted. And I can imagine someone would say, hey, you know what, I'm in good shape because I'm bolted. Again, being bolted is just one phase of, uh, you know, of earthquake protection. You need to look at this other connection uh, with the floor joist. So here's a photograph to show you what these different components are. Right here, that's the mud sill, and it's sitting on top of the foundation. And then you can't really see it, but up in here is, that's where the end joist is. So it looks like there's one that's identical to this. So there's one right here, and then you go back 16 inches, and then there's one right here. And then this is a shear transfer tie that connects the joist, the end joist, 
to the mud sill and then this is the foundation anchor which is a you know a bolt substitute so the way this whole thing is supposed to work is earthquake forces come and try to push that joist that goes into this uh, the shear transfer tie and from the shear transfer tie it goes into the mud sill then it goes over here into the foundation anchor and then that goes into the concrete right here. I would like to point out that uh, only three nails attach the end joist to the mud sill per the code requirement since 19 December of 1971 and before then there was no re code requirement. So uh, there's no telling what you have. Um, there's no talent at all. If your house was built after you know the mid 70s when they had nail guns and nails were easy to put in, uh, there's a good chance that you've got enough nailing. But if it's um, you know otherwise, there's just no talent for sure. So here's a photograph of where the joists run perpendicular to the uh, foundation. So we have a you know a joist here, a joist here, a joist here, a joist here. And way back there is the end joist that we worry about with the three nails. Remember, each joist can be nailed to the mud sill with three nails. That means you're going to have three nails here, three nails here, three nails here, three nails here, and that's why the uh, the floor the the joist to floor in mud sill connection does not fail where the joists are perpendicular to the mud sill because each one of those joists has three nails, which say over a 50 foot long uh, foundation is plenty to keep it. So this is how we would retrofit a house like this. It's also a good review of everything we've learned up to now. Now remember, bolts are put every six feet. So here we're going to have a bolt, here we're going to have a bolt, here we're going to have a bolt. So a total of four along this 25-foot span. Then along here, we're going to have a total of eight along that 50-foot span. So we're out of balance. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have eight here, and eight here, and eight here, and eight here. Remember, earthquake forces uh, attack a house equally in all directions. So forces come here, shown by the green arrow, are gonna be resisted by bolts here and here, and we're gonna make sure there's eight. Earthquake forces coming this way, can be resisted by eight bolts here and eight bolts here. And that means that we have equal resistance on all sides, and it also means we've doubled the ability of our house to resist earthquakes. The next thing is uh, the shear transfer ties right here. So here's the shear, these little black lines. Remember, there's only three nails along this wall right here, and we want to increase that by putting in these shear transfer ties. So that's what we've done. So just to give it a super review, here's a foundation anchor that's a bolt substitute. That's another one, bolt substitute, another one, and another one. And added to the existing bolts, uh, we have a total of eight bolts along this wall and then we also have a total of eight bolts along this wall and then we have the shear transfer ties along this wall and then the shear transfer ties along this wall so that's a complete retrofit for a bolted house this is a really good job you know something for a do-it-yourselfer to do it's not going to take that long if you were to hire us to come and do it you know we pretty much charge the same thing we charge to just rebolt the whole thing um, it's just not worth our, you know, our, our, you know, we have to spend all day anyway, and it's just not worth it for us to do such a small job. So anyway, I hope this helped you, and I think uh, if you t apply this to your house and you retrofit your house like this, uh, you'll get a lot of protection without spending a lot of money. You still might want to bolt the house all over again anyway because pretty much every house I've looked at has a problem where the hole in the mud sill is oversized relative to the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the problem is right now and you can decide that for yourself. If your house is already bolted, there is a 99% chance it has oversized holes in the mud sill. So this is the mud sill looked at from the top. And then right here, this is a hole that's considerably larger than the bolt itself. This is the bolt, and this right here is the hole that it was installed in. Now the building code only allows a very, very small uh, differential here. So the bolt, according to the code, the bolt hole shall be a minimum of 1 32nd of an inch to a maximum of 1 16th of an inch larger than the bolt diameter. So this right here, this hole right here can only be 1 16th of an inch larger than the bolt, which is pretty pretty close tolerance. And so this one's about half an inch. This is a clear code violation. And this is why this, uh, this is what happens when we have a code violation like that. So this is again from the top of the, viewed at the mud sill and viewed from the top, 
we have a bolt which is touching the wood right here then we have a bolt in the center and then we have a bolt here at the edge this happens because the bolt holes are oversized now earthquake force comes this way and this bolt is touching and so then this splits right here earthquake force continues to move on the mud sill and then it starts a split here and then right here there's nothing moving at all so eventually what happens is we have a considerable splitting right here we have partial splitting right here and then we also is starting to split right here the problem is none of the bolts are the bolts are not working together so instead of having all the bolts work together because they're all touching the wood they're all touching various you know points of the wood so they never work together and we end up splitting like this so this is what they look like when they do split this mud sill is moving this way uh, sliding on this foundation anchor i'm mean, sliding on this foundation and when it did it rammed up against the bolt because it had an oversized hole causing this to split so to prevent that damage uh, there is actually no repair for that you just must rebolt the house to make sure this kind of damage does not occur and that's what we do I hope you found this video helpful and that you can apply it to your own house and save some money and really, you know, make your house twice as strong as it is right now. And also, if you can make a comment, if you saw anything at all about this video that was interesting to you, if you found it was, you know, a good video, it wasn't very good, you wished I had covered some other things, anything at all, I would sure appreciate it, especially if it's something technical. A question if you have a question someone else will have a question and then if I answer you I will also have answered it for somebody else so if you could make a comment of any type I'd sure appreciate it sometimes I you know I feel like I'm just staring into a you know video camera I have no idea if I'm reaching anybody I have no idea if this helps anybody so if I could hear from you uh, it would give me some encouragement I would sure appreciate it uh, thank you